2019 is now in session. The first order of business is to approve the minutes from the January 24th, 2019 meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Any modifications or discussion? All in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The minutes are officially adopted. The second order of business is to adopt the resolutions from the January 24th, 2019 meeting. Is there a motion to adopt the resolutions? So moved. Second. Any modifications or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 The resolutions are officially adopted. The board will now conduct the public hearings on today's agenda. Here's how, how we work uh, our process. The first, first, the applicant or the applicant's representative will state the reasons for the requested variance and present any material or documentation which is to be considered regarding the proposal. Next persons wish, wishing to speak in favor of the proposal will be given the opportunity to address the board. Then persons who wish to speak in opposition will be allowed to address the board. Finally, the applicant or, rep or representative will be given the option to make any closing arguments or comments to the board. Following the public hearings this afternoon, the board may make a decision on each application heard. The board may also decide to hold its decision until the next public hearing. If the hearing is closed, no additional information will be allowed into the record except for the information that the board may request. That information will be available for public review at the Zoning Office and City Hall Commons. Uh, staff will now introduce the first application. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The first application is application V19-09. This is a use variance to waive the uses permitted for the property at 324-326 Grant Avenue to establish or maintain a two-family dwelling. The property owner and applicant is Sean Jerzenski and the property is located within a residential class A1 zoning district. We know you. You know me, Terry Luckett, Greater Syracuse Land Bank, 431 East Fayette Street in Syracuse. 32426 Grant Ave was constructed in 1900 as a two-family dwelling. In 1963, the zone changed to RA1. It lost its non-conforming use status because it went vacant in 2011. The property was seized by the city for tax default and turned over to the land bank in March of 2014. Sean Jarzinski purchased the property from the land bank in February of 2017 before we realized there were so many non-conforming buildings in the city of Syracuse. The land bank's now trying to address those zoning issues up front, but there still are a few stragglers out there. I'm sorry. Mr. Jarzinski was not aware the property lost its grandfathering to operate lawfully as a two-family at the time he purchased the home. It's been completely renovated. It's beautiful. Uh, three permits have been issued and closed. We're here today to ask the board for a use variance to operate the property as a two-family dwelling. May I go through the standards of proof? Reasonable return. Mr. Jarzinski has invested over 68,000 into the purchase and renovation of the property. If the variance is not granted, he would need to invest further in the property to reconfigure it as a single family dwelling. As you can see from the comparative market analysis in the application, the average value of single family homes in this neighborhood is around 72,000. If he were to sell the property, it's very unlikely he could recover the sunk costs. If the land bank recaptured the property for default on the rehabilitation enforcement mortgage, we would need to find another buyer willing to purchase and reconfigure the home, or alternatively, we would need to demolish the property. At an average cost of 20000 for demolition, these costs could never be recovered through the sale of the vacant lot to the adjoining neighbors. New construction on the vacant lot is unlikely. As we describe in the standards of proof, neither of these scenarios provides the opportunity for Mr. Jarzinski or the land bank to earn a reasonable return on its investment. Number two, unique circumstances. The property was originally, originally constructed as a two-family dwelling, and both entrances are accessible from outside the structure. 
one on the southeastern corner of the front fa facade and the other on the southwestern corner of the front facade. The staircase to the second floor is not accessible from the int interior of the first floor. This presents a unique circumstance that differs from other single family homes in the 300 block of Grant Avenue and makes it difficult, awkward, and costly to convert to a single family home. Essential character of the locality. The approval of a variance to operate the property as a two family will not change the essential character of Grant Avenue. While the street is zoned for single family homes, in actuality it's a made, up, made up of a mix of single, four other two family dwellings and one three family dwelling. The house fits in architecturally with the neighboring properties. Approving the variance will ensure that this newly renovated property maintains a sustainable and productive use. Removing the blight and occupying the property has improved the neighborhood. And number four, the hardship is not self-created. This property was vacated by a prior irresponsible owner and turned over to the land bank for redevelopment. The loss of the non-conforming use status was not a result of the actions of the city of Syracuse, the land bank, or Mr. Jarzinski. Mr. Jardinsky diligently applied for all required permits during the course of construction. Fees were collected and taxes were paid for a two-family structure, and at no point in time was he notified that there was a zoning issue. Of course, Mr. Jarzinski and his attorney should have performed due diligence to uncover the need for a variance prior to the purchase of the property. Had this been discovered, the land bank would have filed for the use variance prior to the change in ownership. Mr. Jarzinski is here if you have any questions for him. Um, are you working on improving your process? So Our process is perfect now. These are the old ones that okay. were sold before. So still working on the old ones. Could you describe your process now? Now, every time we get a batch of properties, I work with Melissa to determine if there's any, any zoning issues and we address them up front. It's much better to ish deal with these before the big investment's been made. We have learned that. There's probably two, maybe three more, so you may be seeing me. Yeah, this is an investment property. You want to talk to Mr. Well, Jasinski uh, about mean, that? You can answer if you know. Or he, he actually has a buyer who's, who wants to close. That's a, uh, somebody who's going to live in the second floor, and her sister's going to live in the first floor. Okay, so it's going to be... Family, owner -occupied. Owner -occupied. It's, it's a perfect outcome. Yeah, that's great. It really is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw it. It's beautiful. Other questions? Um, just to confirm, and this is probably a question for Mr. Jarzinski, neither you nor your attorney called zoning before. I realize you're issued permits, but that's a whole separate be department. Quite Excuse me. You're going to have to uh, oh. get to the microphone, say your name and address, and then answer the question. Thank you. Uh, Sean Jarzinski, I live at 1521 Gun Barrel Road, Baldwinsville. Um, this was the second house I've I bought, and I, to be honest, I really didn't know that the attorney was supposed to do his due diligence in checking with Second zoning. house from the land bank or second house in general? My second house in general. Okay. I, I owned a house in Strathmore. That was part of the reason that I bought the house on Grant because I enjoyed living in, in the neighborhood. So is that it? That's a no then? Nobody called zoning before you closed? No, no okay. ma'am. He, he did file for several permits though. Right, which is a separate is. animal altogether, um, obviously. So ultimately, it's, a, it's an and test. The use variances are very difficult and they're made to be difficult for a reason. So coming to ask for forgiveness rather than permission is never, ever, ever the way to go with these from a legal standpoint. Um, I don't say this from an empathy. It is beautiful. It looks like you did a really nice job. Um, so when we get to that last factor of self-created hardship, that's where there's a struggle. I just, I, to be honest, I didn't know that. I realize that. Um, I mean, I'm, bu I'm buying another house and I've already made the call to zoning just because of this process. And that's great. That's what we hope happens. So. I just wanted to confirm that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody wish to speak in favor of this application? Does anybody wish to speak against the application? 
Hearing none, we're going to go to the next case, which uh, we'll talk about it when we get no. <laughs> You can announce it, and then there's... The next application is application V19-10. This is an area variance for the required front yard, the required side yard, density, and maximum structural coverage for the properties at 1219 through 1221. 1225 through 1227, 1231, 1237, 1301, 1311, 1317, and 1323 East Genesee Street, as well as 208, 216, 218, 222, and 224 Ashworth Place to establish a multifamily dwelling. The property owner and applicant is Northside Genesee Associates, LLC, and the property is located within a residential class B and a residential class C zoning district. So before oh. we ask the applicant to come up, we have two issues that we're dealing with today. One, I'm going to refer to um, our, our attorney, and that is that we are not going to be voting. The Board of Zoning Appeals will not be voting on, on this today. We'll get an explanation. The other issue is that there are two board members that uh, I'm not going to say they are. I, I think they're considering uh, recusing themselves uh, for different reasons. What should we deal with first? I suppose we can deal with that first issue as to why you aren't voting today. Uh, coordinated review for SECRA is not complete. Uh, however, public notice has gone out and uh, the applicants are here today, so we will be conducting uh, the hearing and any questions or comments that you have, you can state on the record and uh, we can um, refer those to CIDA as part of that uh, coordinated re review process and members of the public are free to come up and speak for or against the project. Well, and I, I'd like to say, um, Mr. Chairman, um, I'm going to recuse myself from discussion uh, on this case, and I will um, eventually abstain from voting. Um, I am a member of the Board of Housing Visions Unlimited, and they are um, opposed to this project. Um, so uh, that is the reason why I'm going to recuse uh, myself from the discussion. And I'll be recusing myself, too, for the same reasons. I'm also on the Board of uh, Housing Visions. Uh, did you did I understand correctly that uh, we're having the hearing because the public notice went out yes. but when this gets to the next step we will call another hearing and start over again you know I believe yeah that's very likely what will because the facts will change um, based on uh, the secret process likely will likely change. So with that in mind, uh, there will be another hearing and public notice will go out again. So with that, I'm going to invite the applicant to make their presentation. And, uh, and everybody will have uh, the opportunity if they wish to comment on it. <coughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Matt Kerwin with Barclay Damon, 125 East Jefferson Street, Syracuse here on behalf of uh, Northside Genesee Associates in connection with the proposed uh, multi-story apartment building you just referenced in your, in your uh, summary. Uh, this product is proposed for the block of East Genesee, essentially between Pine Street to the east and uh, Walnut Ave to the west. Um, and bordered to the, to the north by, uh, by Ashworth Place and obviously fronted on East Genesee Street. It's a 283 unit uh, development as proposed currently with, and, and I'm, I've got with me here Steve Hillbrand from the Michaels organization, which is the, the parent company of Northside Genesee Associates and Jess Sudall from Pacero Associates. They're the engineers for the project. So they'll be speaking uh, more uh, thoroughly about some of the details of the project, but just as an overview for the board, uh, the proposal is 283 units 283 parking spaces to be contained beneath the building that's proposed uh, with with town two-story townhomes fronting on East Genesee and Ashford Place um, and the purpose behind that was to provide access to those utility to those uh, individual townhomes from those streets as opposed to having a, 
a main entrance that led into a, a foyer of some sort. Um, site access will be gained generally from Ashford Place. Parking will be will be via Ashford Place as well, Ashworth Place as well. Um, there is proposed uh, storefront amenity space that Jess will speak about further here in a bit, but it's not proposed for the southwest corner of the building. Um, the architectural design of the building has, has been uh, proposed in a way that we think resembles the, uh, the development across the street at 505 Walnut and is consistent with the Mansion Corridor District uh, development requirements. Um, as far as the building itself goes, the design is really, uh, it steps down a bit from south to north to resemble the change in topography and also to resemble the change in, in uh, building height from uh, the property across the street to the north, to the south, I should say. Um, you have an application that walks through the, the, the various variants uh, considerations for the board. Uh, I won't go into those in detail, as I'm sure you've read them already, but I will say that in terms of, in terms of what the board is charged with, uh, which is you know, balancing uh, the considerations before you, uh, we feel that the, um, as proposed uh, and as, as to be presented here in further detail by Jess and Steve, we think that the, the benefit to be gained by the applicant in receiving these variances uh, is outweighed by any detriment to be, to be uh, uh, experienced by the neighborhood. We don't think there's any health or safety issues, obviously. We think actually safety could be improved by the design of this building in terms of uh, limiting alleyways and those types of things that would otherwise be, might be you know, subject to, to those types of issues and concerns. Uh, we also think that in terms of the welfare of the neighborhood, you know, the, the, the development across the street is a prime example. That's, that, to our knowledge, has not resulted in any detriment to the neighborhood at all. In fact, it's, it's been a benefit to the neighborhood. Uh, other similar developments in and around the university area and East Tennessee Street uh, have been granted similar, uh, if not uh, identical waivers and or variances for similar projects, uh, and this would be no different. Um, I, I, I would, my immediate reaction to that is those didn't involve destroying a bunch of homes, right? The, the, the one across the street that you're referring to, uh, I don't remember if there were any homes demolished there. I know it was, it was built on a, on a, a medical building. Sure, But sure. how many homes are you uh, proposing to uh, demolish? It's a total, of, you wanna to speak to that, Steve, or Jess? I'll speak to, I'll speak to it when I get there. Okay. Yeah. But there wouldn't be a net reduction in, in available living space, obviously, where it's not as if we're removing homes and putting in an office building. There is going to be a, an amenity space for, for retail, but the intent is to provide market rate uh, accommodations for everyone in the community, not just, not just the folks that are there currently. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it off to, uh, to Steve first. He's going to speak a bit about Northside Genesee Associates, and then Jess will talk more about the project itself. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to apologize. I'm not feeling great, so bear with me if uh, I don't sound great. Just stay over there. Yeah, I, I will. Uh, my name is Steve Hillebrand. I'm here on behalf of the Michaels organization. We're a company based out of Marlton, New Jersey. Uh, many people here are familiar with us for our development across the street, which is 505 Walnut. 505 is a property that's designed to attract student living. Um, one component of the Michaels organization is an arm that develops student housing. However, it's worth noting that the majority of our business operates in other multifamily platforms, whether that's affordable housing, military housing, market rate housing, on-campus housing. We're a multifamily uh, developer, owner, and operator. We, we operate all of our own assets. And so, you know, I think there's a perception that because our first foray in Syracuse specifically was student housing is that that's the only genre in which we play. That's not the case. To expand upon that, in the state of New York, we operate 16 affordable housing properties currently with one student housing property, the aforementioned 505 on Walnut. In the state of New York, we do not operate any conventional housing currently, market rate, which is what we're proposing here, and we do not operate military. However, if you were to spread across 35 states around the country, we do have a variety of different product types in which we uh, own and operate uh, in different states. So depending on what state you're in, you may see a very different matrix. Um, our intent for this property is really to serve the greater community of Syracuse. Um, we th we we're confident with our unit mix being 80% two bedrooms and down with 70% of the overall unit mix being one bedrooms or studios that the property is appealing to the masses regardless of 
where they work, where, you know, what their current occupation status might be. So we're comfortable in the location. We looked at the land use plan. We understand that um, you know, it, it, there's gonna be evolutions of where uh, design and where pro uh, product is driven to certain areas, but we felt comfortable that this was appropriate for the use. We feel like we've been a great neighbor at 505 on Walnut. We've had uh, tremendous success there. We don't feel like it's been poorly operated. Again, we operate all of our own properties. We would operate this property, and we have a lot of experience in the multifamily uh, arena. So we take very seriously that obligation, and we're here to be a, uh, a vital part of the community and, and to continue our progress here. I think it's worth noting, uh, certainly doesn't mean that we're going to be selected or win, but we have also submitted to participate in the uh, RFP that's associated with uh, the Syracuse Housing Authority project. So we're interested in, in uh, again, all genres of multifamily housing. We feel we're, we're pretty certified to do so. We operate 400 communities and 150,000 residents. We'd like the opportunity to expand upon that. Thank you. Good afternoon again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our whole design team here seems to be sick. Six. Yeah, that's why I was going to hang out with this guy. Um, I do have some handouts I'd like to you hand out. Yes, it's Jess Sudal from Passero Associates. We are the civil engineers for the project. What's your address? It is 242 East Main Street in Rochester, New York. Um, I have some handouts to kind of help everybody follow along. So sorry, we kind of jumped the gun there a little bit early with maybe some more introductory type material in terms of what the existing use and what the proposal is. Um, the first page that you see in front of you there, um, obviously the parcel in consideration or parcels is comprises 1.7 acres approximately um, between East Genesee Street and Ashworth and also between Pine Street and Walnut Avenue. On the first page there, you can see that Yellow and orange is the subject site, obviously. And then across the street, you can actually see the 505 Walnut Project that um, Steve mentioned earlier. One of the other things you could see on this map is that kind of the corridor sizes and some of the courtyards are relatively comparable. And I think that this map also gives a good understanding of the context of the overall development area as you get to some of the more heavily um, populated commercial type properties to the north and some of the you know higher density properties as you move further to the east towards the hospital and other um, urban areas. The parcel is actually 12 different parcels that we're currently proposing to re-subdivide into a single parcel. Um, there are level 11 single family home properties and that's shown on this survey drawing right here that is part of your package. Um, the orange outlines of the survey are each of the individual existing buildings and again they're not single family homes or owner occupied type structures. They're all multifamily structures today. So the, you know, in terms of the multifamily use nature of the parcel, that remains unchanged. Obviously we are stepping up in density and size of the building and it is, you know, I'm not trying to say that our proposal is comparable to the, you know, buildings that have been on this site for quite a long time. But I'm just trying to make the point that it will continue to function as a multifamily rental type property as it largely does.